at Cebu International Airport and since we're going to Moabual we actually pre-booked the transfer from um, the airport because it's quite a long drive. I think it's four hours by a public bus so we decided to get a taxi instead because that's going to be a bit faster and it's with the cold weather it's definitely it would be challenging for for me in particular for Beb it's fine but for me to survive I'm not sure if a public bus is air conditioned uh, and I'm generally not very very good with heat um, so yeah now we are waiting for the guy to bring his car and yeah so far it's been all good somehow the flight departed 20 minutes early and arrived 40 minutes early um, which I kind of like never experienced in my life um, it was definitely odd um, but yeah, I don't know if it left people behind or everybody arrived on time. Mysterious. And I forgot to mention that the transfer cost 3,000 Philippine pesos per car each way. Um, so it is a bit pricey compared to a public bus. But honestly, it was absolutely worth it because I got so dizzy even inside the car. I cannot imagine how dizzy I would have been in a public bus. We also stopped at a petrol station to buy some snacks and I got this super spicy dried squid. In total, the journey took around three and a half hours and it was pretty tough. We arrived just before 4 p.m. and there was still time for a quick swim. So we grabbed some snorkeling equipment from our hotel and literally ran to the beach to do some snorkeling. And we were so impressed, we didn't expect Malbal to be such an amazing snorkeling destination. Uh, we of course knew about the sardines and that's why we came there, but snorkeling there is also great. Honestly, snorkeling in Malbal was amazing and I can't wait to do it tomorrow again. By the way, we stayed at a hotel called Harman Suites, Moal Boal. The hotel was perfect, it was really affordable, it had um, a really nice, clean and air-conditioned room that was just about maybe three or four minutes walking from the beach, so really close. And it had all the equipment that we could borrow for free for snorkeling. Um, everybody was also very friendly. Breakfast wasn't included, but around the hotel there were so many nice um, kind of little places and restaurants, so there was absolutely no problem. And also Mobile is actually a very affordable destination. You could get a cocktail there for about a dollar or dollar and a half or uh, sometimes even less than a pound. Um, eh, honestly, it had such a nice vibe. Um, I haven't seen places like Moal Boal for a while and I kind of expected Boracay to be a little bit like that, but um, Boracay wasn't like that at all and I can honestly say that I enjoy the vibe in Moal Boal a little bit more than in Boracay. Um, it was time for us to get something for dinner, so we found a place. There are plenty of restaurants, as I mentioned, um, all of them were affordable. We we found this place um, with a kind of like a second floor terrace uh, from where you could see pretty much all the street and just observe um, people walking by. Uh, it was kind of an early time to have dinner, I guess, because everybody arrived when we already finished eating. So we had some Thai food and then we went somewhere else for a quick dessert. It was a really nice place. I don't remember the name, but Mobile is tiny, you'll find it. And then we had massage and it was honestly the best massage we had um, during the entire trip to the Philippines. Next morning we went snorkeling again. We didn't have breakfast because we thought we would get dizzy if we have breakfast before snorkeling. Um, if that's not the case for you, I think you're lucky. But with the sunshine we saw so many sardines and it was extremely, extremely impressive. We absolutely loved the view. Um, we also saw a lot of other different fishes, of different colors and shapes and sizes. Um, there were so many starfishes. Um, the starfishes in Philippines, the most common ones are blue. And then we finally saw a turtle. And we actually saw two turtles, but one of them just 
passed so close to me. I've never seen a turtle that close and so clearly in my life. Um, it was an amazing experience and it kind of was followed by a group of people. There are plenty of kind of snorkeling tours. They depart from Cebu at like 4 a.m. So it gets quite crowded and these tours leave quite early as well. So I think by 12 they were all gone. Um, but yeah, it was a bit crowded at some point but if you can swim at like 1 p.m or 2 p.m uh, you will have the whole beach for yourself then we had a quick breakfast again it was an absolutely lovely place great prices really delicious lots of amazing fruit and then we spent a bit of time just walking around and then we asked for a taxi and it was time to head to our next destination a slop Aslop is another super popular destination on the Cebu island and most people come there to swim with whale sharks um, and we were not an exception. Uh, in total it took us around two hours to get there and we got super dizzy on the way. We made it to Oslob and it was a very tough ride even though it was just around two hours uh, we went through the mountain so the, we went like the the wind, We took a super windy road to the top of the mountain, and then it was a super windy, even the windier road down, like downstairs. I don't know, down to the hotel. And oh my god, we got so dizzy. And the room is not air conditioned. I mean, it has air conditioning, but it takes time to cool down. So we are very sweaty and very dizzy. But hopefully, we'll, we'll um, rest a little bit and cover our strings and go out again when it's not that hot because now it's the hottest time and i also wanted to show you the hotel because it's so beautiful i just love the aesthetic of this hotel really really pretty so yeah this is the i don't know tulum aesthetic um i don't think it's necessarily <laughs> tulum vibes but i've seen a lot of um, hotels in tulum following the same design once we rested for a little while, we decided to go for a walk in Oslob town. Oslob is a really, really small town and it's also not touristy at all, uh, meaning there are not many landmarks and not even many restaurants. Actually, Oslob has only two restaurants and like a couple of cafes like this one serving bubble tea. I was actually surprised to find bubble tea there. But yeah, it's a very rural place and most people who come to swim with a whale sharks come there for a day or stay close to the spot where you swim with, with, with whale sharks uh, which is roughly 20-25 minutes driving away from the main town of, of Oslop. However, we were departing from Oslop uh, to go to Panglao next day so we decided to uh, stay close to the ferry. Um, the town itself as I mentioned, doesn't have many things to do at all, but it has this beautiful church and the remains of uh, all of the old Spanish fort. So yeah, there is nothing else. We walked for a little bit and then we went to have dinner in one of the restaurants, which was very affordable and um, pretty good. Next morning, we woke up really early, just before 7 a.m., because it was time to go to swim with the whale sharks. Our tuk-tuk driver and guide met us um, at the hotel. It took us around 30 minutes to uh, drive there to the whale shark center. We passed the onboarding paid and our guide, um, he honestly helped us so much. He waited with us for um, an hour and a half and he explained what was gonna happen uh, so he was super helpful basically the queue was quite large so we waited uh, an hour and a half for our turn um, they announce they give you a number once they announce your number you basically uh, board a small boat and then you have half an hour to swim with the whale sharks you are not allowed to come close to the sharks but the sharks can actually come close to you there's nothing stopping them from doing that in our case, it was quite wavy, so we had uh, we struggled to 
be close to our boat. We literally had to hold it all the time and even got a little bit dizzy. But overall, it was an amazing experience and it just uh, makes me a little bit sad that it is not completely ethical. So even though you are not allowed to touch the sharks, of course, people, um, the tour organizers, they come there every day and they are feeding the sharks. That's why the sharks are there in the first place. Since, of course, there's no animal cruelty, it is not as bad, of course, as riding elephants in Thailand, of course, but it is not fully ethical, so if it bothers you, I don't recommend going on this tour. We went to our hotel next, we had a bit of time to finish packing, and then it was time to go to catch the ferry. There is no ferry terminal in Oslo. There is literally this tiny tent and you need to arrive there at least 40 minutes before the ferry scheduled departure time, which we did, and departed on time. I will leave the link to the ferry tickets in the description of the video down below. But um, thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video from Bohol.